Welcome to lecture 15 of the course CS213 Object Oriented Programming of the Kohat University of Science and Technology. In this lecture we will talk about the instance of operator as part of our discussion of polymorphism from our previous lectures. We may also discuss packages and access modifiers in the context of inheritance and polymorphism. The relevant material for this lecture can be found in our reference book Java How to Program Early Objects version Detail and Detail in Chapter 10 of the book. You can also find the relevant material in other tutorials online. Some of the links have been given over here and the relevant topics for this lecture are the instance of operator can be seen on the slide as well. We have discussed some of these topics and some we will discuss in the upcoming lectures or maybe in this lecture. The instance of operator in Java is used to test whether the object is an instance of the specified type. If we want to check that an object is an instance of a class or a subclass or an interface we can use the instance of operator it is also known as the comparison operator because it compares the instance with the type the type in this case is the class or a subclass or the interface so if you want to check that if an object is for example is an object of a particular class you will compare it with that class using the instance of operator if it is true then it will return a true if it is false then it will return a false if we apply the instance of operator with any variable that has null value it returns a false for example consider the following hierarchy we have a class p that has a bunch of subclasses in this case it has a subclass student and it has a subclass employee student has its own subclass tertiary student and college student the person has an object p now p is an instance of the person class but p is not an instance of the student class or the employee class so if you want to confirm that if p is an instance of the person class or the student class or the employee class we can use the instance of operator these print statements should return a true or a false statement to us it should print these statements in the first case we understand that P is an instance of the person class as we can see over here it should return a true the second case P instance of a student which is not the case and it should return a false same is for the third example that P is not an instance of the employee class and it should return a false similarly if we have in the same example if we declare an object for the student class now and S is an instance of the person as well as the student class why because an object of the subclass is an object of the super class the student class is a subclass of the person class so we can say that S is now an object of the student class as well as S is an object of the person class. But student and employee are incompatible types. If we try to compare the student object with the employee class, the compile will generate an error because there is no reason to compare the student object with the employee class the compiler will not allow it because they are not compatible it is like comparing an integer with a string they are completely irrelevant from each other we cannot use the instance of operator between s and the employee class s is an object of the student class which is a subclass of the person class so there is a relationship between the student class and the person class but there is no horizontal relationship between these two classes so the first two statements should return a true 
the third will not return a false it will not execute it is an incompatible comparison it is a comparison between two classes or an object of a class or an a class that are not compatible with each other because student s is an object of the student class which is a subclass of the person class but has no direct relationship with the employee class to extend the example further create a student object but with a person reference now uh, we can use of course the super class reference to declare an object for the subclass as in this case we can declare we can use the person class reference to declare an object of the subclass now again p1 is an instance of the person class and the student class p1 the speed should be smaller but p1 is not an instance of the employee class here since there we are using the super class reference now we will not get the compatibility error because employee is an object uh, is a subclass of the person class and we are declaring this object using the person class reference therefore we will not get an error we will get a false output for this comparison because p1 is not an instance of the employee class that is why we get a false but as opposed to the previous case where we were getting a compiler error in this case we will not get a compiler error p1 because p1 is declared as a person therefore we can use the instance of operator between p1 and imply since person p1 is used to declare as an object of the student class using a reference to the person class that is a super class of both the employee class and the student class extending the example further we use the subclass of the student class to declare an object ts in this case now ts is an instance of the person student and the tertiary student classes because student is a subclass of the person class and tertiary student is a subclass of the student class so the ts operator that is declared using the tertiary student reference is of subclass of the student class which in turn is a subclass uh, sorry is an object of the tertiary student class which in turn is an object of the student class and also is a, a sub, is an object of the person class but tertiary student as we can see has no relationship with the college student They, these are incompatible with each other we cannot let's say compare the ts object with the college student or the employee class tertiary student and employee are incompatible types we will get compilation errors for these two comparisons and we will get we should get a true for this one as we can see we get uh, a true output for this comparison but this will not be compared and we will get a compiler error because tertiary student is used to declare this object which has no direct relationship with the college student or the employee class again we further extend the example create a tertiary student object but with a student reference now what should happen is we should be able to compare this s2 object with the college student but we cannot compare s2 object with the employee class s2 is an instance of person student and tertiary student so this statement should return a true if we compare say that s2 is instance instance of let's say student that should also return a true but 
is opposed to the previous case if we say s2 instance of college student this will not generate an error this time it will return a false s2 declare a student therefore we can use the instance of operator between s2 and college student but we cannot do the same for the employee and uh, class student employee are incompatible types so we cannot use instance of between s2 and the employee class this will generate an error since s2 is an object of the student class which is a super class of the tertiary student class a tertiary student class is a subclass of the student class which is the super class of the college student class so there is a distant relationship between these two classes therefore we can use it for comparison which will return a false class so to check your understanding of polymorphism it's a simple example if you can guess the output of this program before you run uh, this program we have a class vehicle and it has a method move that prints some prints some statement and we have a class car that extends the vehicle class and it has the same move method and it has its own print statement as well as there is a call to the super classes move method we declare an object of the car class using a reference to the super class vehicle and then we call that object to call the we use that object to call the move method we need to guess which method will be called and what should be the output of this program so we'll go to packages again and we'll have a look at how we can manage our programs better when we have super classes and subclasses and how they are related to each other and how we can manage them using packages we have discussed and seen what packages are and what they are used for but we'll see them again use uh, when we use inheritance and polymorphism what is the role of a package and why it is important to use packages properly for proper management and understanding of our programs a package as we understand it is a grouping of related types providing access protection and namespace management in simple terms a package is a namespace that organizes a set of related classes and interfaces related types in this case can be called as like classes interfaces uh, enums etc the purpose of a package is to make types easier to find and use to avoid naming conflicts and to control access programmers bundle groups of related types into packages conceptually you can think of packages as being similar to different folders on your computer now if you remember in our earlier classes we were creating our program using the console and then we were creating our files in folders and then we would access those folders using the command line interface now those folders can be called as packages that contain our files and those files were our class files and java files we will look at that in upcoming slides but i am sure i hope that you remember how to create a class using the folders and the notepad so note that types refer to classes interfaces examples java.io file operations it is used for file operations so java is a folder that contains the io class the java can be called a package that contains the io class java.lang java is a folder that contains the lang class basic language functionality and fundamental are types so if we want to use this we can import these classes into our programs java.util java is a is a package that contains the util class java collection java structure classes 
and if you want to use any of the classes or subclasses of the util class we can import using the import java.util statement similarly uh, java.awt will help us import the basic hierarchy of packages for native GUI, GUI components or GUI components creating a package to create a package you need to choose a name for the package or the folder and put a package statement with that name of at the top of every source file if you have seen in your programs you will uh, notice that there is a name of the package at the top of your source file like this package x that is the name x is the name of the package where you are creating your program that contains the types that you want to include in the package the types in our case has been um, the classes that we have been creating rules there can be only one package statement in each source file so you cannot say package x and package y you cannot um, have these lines in your source uh, more than one line in your source file and must be the first line in the source file for example you cannot have the same file in two different folders you can have a copy but the exact same file will be in a pass can possibly be in only one folder that is why we can have a class or a file or a source file in only one package if you put multiple types in a single source file only one can be public and it must have the same name as the source file if you remember we have been saving our class names our classes with the same name as our classes so the name of our java file and our class name are always the same and that name has always been declared as public that type and which has been in our case the class so we have always declared our classes as public and we can only have one public class in one file it must have the same name as the source file and the reason for that is that we are going to save that file with the name of that class we can include non-public types for example non-public classes if we need in that same file but it will have a public type a public class and it can only have one public class why do we need to include non-public types we may uh, use some of the examples where we need to include more than one classes in one single file where only one will be public public and the rest will be non-public and why do we need uh, to make our class public this rule makes it easy for the class loader and the human programmer to find the definition for a public type so if we need to look for that class we can write the name of that class uh, and we can import that class into another um, program it's a if you would put multiple types in a single source file only one can be public and it must have the same name as the source file so the public class the name of our file has unwell always be the same as our class name you can define public class circle in circle.java uh, that has what that is what we have been doing from our first class define public interface draggable in the file draggable.java interfaces uh, are we are going to discuss in our upcoming lectures public enum day in the file day java day dot java so enum is another type that we can uh, use for our file names you can include non-public types in the same file as a public type although this is uh, strongly discouraged unless the non-public types are small and closely related to the public type but only the public type will be accessible from outside of the class so if even we have a non-public class uh, with a public class in the same file we cannot access that non-public class from outside of that package 
you can only access the public class from outside of the package all the top level non public types will be package private which means that we cannot access those non public types from outside of the package this rule makes it easy for the class loader and the human programmer to find the definition for a public type so for example if we need that class from outside of the class in another program we can use or import that class using the import statement and the name of the package and dot separate by a dot and the name of the class the name of a catch package determines the directory in which the files of this package should be stored so it's simply a folder that contains all our files the name of a public type determines the name of the file in which the type's definition must be found so the file name uh, that we have been using for example the circle.java or the car.java is basically the same as our class name that we uh, we have uh, been only using the class types so far so we can say that we have we always save our class with the same name as our our file with the same name as our class name the default package although if you are using an ide for example it allows you to declare a package for you by default now you can use the default package and you can uh, create programs in that you have been doing that but it is okay for smaller uh, programs what if you want to use let's say your code in, in some other um, program you won't be able to do, do that with a default package if you do not use a package statement your type ends up in an unnamed package there is no name for the package it is an unnamed package you can do that in the ides but there are uh, problems uh, with that if you want to export that class or import that class into some other um, class or program generally speaking an unnamed package is only for small or temporary applications or when you are just beginning the development process you should all, you are always advised to create the package first and we have been doing that in our examples and we will uh, look at that when we discuss an example in the upcoming lecture otherwise classes and interfaces belong in the name packages we should always name, uh, create our package first and then we can include classes and interface and other types that we want to use in that program package naming conflicts uh, with programmers worldwide writing uh, classes and interfaces using the java programming language it is likely that many programmers will use the same name for different types the compiler allows both classes to have the same name if they are in different packages so if you are creating uh, a program that Bo and both of the programs need to re uh, re uh, have the same class names let's say both of the programs have the car you are creating two different games both of the games have cars you can have a car class in both of the programs if you use different package names the fully qualified name of each rectangle class includes the package name so if you want to use the complete name of a class that will be identified by its package that is the fully qualified name of the rectangle class in the graphics package is graphics dot rectangle and the fully qualified name of the rectangle class in the java dot awt package is java dot awt dot rectangle external references to use a public package member from outside its package you must do one of the following the fully qualified name for class c in package p1 is p1.c so if you want to access a class from outside of its package you will need to use the name of the package with the name of that class to import class c from package p1 you write import p1.c to import an entire package p1 you write import p1 dot steric that will import all of the classes in the p1 package for example we have a package p1 
that is shown by the folder so the folders are basically our packages that can contain different classes directory package p1 that is the name of our folder it has a class protection and then there is class 1 there is class 2 package p1 has class protection public class class 1 tries to access if we want to let's say for example here we can see that we are accessing the protection class n class 1 so we can access and the class 1 and class class 2 are outside of this package p1 so if you want to access the protection class from outside of the class for example let's say in this class 1 we can use the name of the package followed by the name of the class separated by a dot operator p1 dot protection will help us declare an object of the protection class in class 1 that is outside of the p1 package so we can see that we can declare an object of the protection class that is c using p1.protection c is equal to new p1.protection it will declare an object of the protection class in class 1 similarly once we import the package or import all of the files of the package p1 we can directly declare the object of the protection class now we do not need to access that class using the p1 dot operator using the dot operator we can directly access the protection class since we have imported all of the files of the p1 package into the uh, class 2 file so in this video we talked about the instance of operators and then we discussed the packages in the context of inheritance and polymorphism in the next video of this lecture we will talk about access modifiers so see you in the next video